Okay. Well, thank you guys for coming tonight. Um, I'm going to talk about detox, and that's why you guys are all here. So as we go through this information, um, if you have a lot of questions, just um, raise your hand. I'll try to do my best to answer them as we go along. But my goal is that you get a really good sense of first why you would want detox support, what the purpose of it would be, what the symptoms may be that you would experience. And then the third thing we're going to go through is solutions. So you start to get an idea of what you need to do to start the process. So as we go through this, what I find is so interesting is that we are exposed to toxins constantly. And if you think of our environment and even like um, the haze that is over Denver, without you even thinking about it, your body is having to process toxins. Your liver has to work to process toxins. We're going to talk about the process that your body goes through naturally to release things out of your system, to get rid of toxins. And so our whole purpose and why we really do detox is to upregulate that system, meaning we want what your body does naturally to work even better. And so what I'm going to have, when Josh comes back, I'm going to have him pass out a detox questionnaire. And I want you to fill that out and you can look through it. You don't have to do it here if you don't want to, or if you want to do it, that's fine. Um, but we're looking for you to fill out what kind of symptoms you experience because it's going to start to give me information about how if, if toxicity is a true issue for your body or if it actually handles toxicity pretty well. So we'll get into that and why. And people are different um, based on their genetics, based on um, their lifestyle, their stress level. Um, but in today's world, so the question is no longer if we are toxic, it's how toxic are we. And so I'm going to go through the different factors of what leads to toxicity for people. And I, I'll keep it fairly brief because we could go on, we could go into really great detail on this, but most people get really bored and, and start falling asleep at this time of night. So we're going to just keep going through this so um, we can get through it pretty quickly. But it's crazy. I, you know, the difference when you think about like just household chemicals, cleaning products that you're exposed to probably on a daily basis. Um, what's interesting about household chemicals or toxins like that is that how, when you think of like a medication that has to be approved by the FDA to be marketed, chemicals are the opposite, like household chemicals, chemicals that are used in industry. Um, it's the opposite situation. They, are let out into the market and until there's enough of a negative response then they're taken off of the market then they're tested so there's all kinds of things that people have been exposed to throughout the years that you know we have no idea really how they've affected someone and so but when you look at this um, 212 chemicals were tested and almost all to be found in the blood and urine of most Americans. So most of us are dealing with a very high level of toxicity. And we'll talk about what that leads to. And so um, as we go through this, I just I want you to start thinking about your lifestyle. I mean, we're all we've all got different levels of toxic exposure. I know like my parents both grew up in way northern Minnesota near Canada and they're heavy farming communities. So they were exposed to tons of pesticides and insecticides for years and years and years of their life. And so a lot of us grew up in that kind of a situation. And so even if you think about the environment you grew up in, what your house is like today, I think most of us are pretty conscious now, I'm hoping, about the kind of cleaners we use, um, you know, trying to make more conservative choices in terms of healthier products, but we all have different um, things that we need to tackle. So you want to start thinking about where your toxins are coming from. But this, this one I, I just want to briefly talk about in terms of genetics. So we all have toxicity pathways in our bodies, meaning our bodies, our liver has specific pathways aided by specific enzymes that help us release toxins out through our digestive system. But your skin will release toxins. Um, your, you know, obviously when you have a bowel movement, urine, all of that is what releases toxins through our system. But the skin is a big one. So if your digestive system isn't working really well, anyone know what the most common thing is that people will come in with if the digestive tract is really shut down that you can visibly see on their body? Yeah, you see eczema, that's one. The, the other one is acne. And so the one, the things that will show up, if someone's body can't process toxicity well, they'll get acne right in through here. And it, that's a good sign that they're probably really constipated. I hate telling that to people. I'm like, I can read your body by looking at you. Um, but they'll get acne all along their jawline. 
um, if they can't process hormones well or the liver has. So that's more of like lower digestive tract. Um, so they're probably really constipated, but if it's further up in the digestive system and they're, um, so it's more of like liver isn't, small intestine isn't working as well, they'll get more um, hormonal acne, which is more on their forehead. So these things will they'll show up as signs in the body because that toxicity has got to get out in some way. And if it can't get out through the normal systems, it'll show up on the skin. Um, it's just something that you just want to think about. Your body's always telling you something. The body doesn't do something without a reason. So it's you can learn a lot just by paying attention to what's going on with someone's body. Um, so when we look at this, but genetics is a big one. So Scott and I have actually had genetic testing done, and it, it tells us, okay, these pathways are working really well for you. These pathways aren't working well for another person. So you can actually get information to know his, he has very poor detox pathways. So if he did not detox regularly, he would be a prime candidate for developing cancer later in life. So I'm going to talk more about that later. But um, where I have pretty good detox pathways, I don't have to work as hard at it. Um, but still, we, we try to do a detox a couple times a year. He does it more frequently than that and does more detoxification support than I need to. So everybody's different, but genetics plays a role in it. But lifestyle combined with genetics is really what is the big determining factor in developing disease. So if you know these things and, you know, doing genetic testing like that, you can spend a ton of money doing tons and tons of blood work and all these different tests. But if you just decide, okay, I, need, I know that detoxification is a good thing that I need to do for myself and my health a couple times a year, or I need to be conscious of what foods I'm consuming so that you're constantly supporting detoxification pathways, you can make a huge difference in your health. You can really make long-term changes in terms of what type of disease you may develop or not develop. So lifestyle is huge. It's not all about genetics. It's so much about lifestyle um, that can really make a difference in how we view our health and how we're going to support ourselves. So how do you know that you need to make a change? So this is where, Joan, did you get a detox questionnaire? I, can you guys, sorry, Josh, I'm just like, can you pass them out? Um, I didn't, he didn't, he was not prepared to do all these things today. I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> Um, so look at this questionnaire because it divides different areas of your body, different systems of your body into groups so that you can start to see if, what we need to do and what level of support you need. So I'll, I'm going to go back to that in a minute. But things that people commonly experience if they need to detoxify, fibromyalgia is a big one. How many people do you know now that are, have been diagnosed with fibromyalgia? It's a very common condition. Um, it's developing at a very rapid rate, but one of the biggest determining factors of whether someone is going to develop that or not is do they have underlying detoxification issue, issues? Or is their body really toxic? Um, muscle aches, difficulty concentrating, fatigue, food allergies, or chemical sensitivities. So if your detox pathways aren't working well, your digestive system becomes very clogged and it will recycle the same groups of particles over and over and over again, which can lead to a variety of symptoms. But if you feel like you react to everything you eat, you probably are pretty toxic. Irritability, headache. Um, one of the major signs I always talk about in Chinese medicine with um, having a lot of liver congestion or the liver not being able to detoxify the body well is just being very irritable and very angry, having a quick temper. Um, so it's a really good thing to, in preparation for spring to do a detox. Um, so feeling, having a really low energy, energy level and abdominal pain. So there's so many different things that people can experience. And as you go through the detox questionnaire, you may notice, wow, there's a lot of these things that I'm dealing with, or you might just have a few. So it really depends on the person. So one of the things that you can start to do is really reduce your exposure. We can't always control the air quality that we breathe, but we can control it in our home. So I would say, you know, even fresh in your home by opening the windows and getting fresh air into the house, getting um, natural sources of um, detoxification would be good. But look at your cleaning products. Look at the soaps and the even like the, the lotion you're using, the makeup you're using. Do you use a lot of nail polish, um, nail polish remover? All of these things are very toxic to our system. And so... Um, Look at what kind of products you're using, but this was another one that I thought was a really good idea is to um, change the, use some kind of, a, kind of a filter on your shower. Because think of how much water you're exposed to during a shower. And if that is highly chlorinated, which I know ours is, we've had to, we had to switch that around in our home, but actually put a filter on our shower, on our shower head. 
So, but so interesting, chloroform is released when chlorinated water is heated. So that's something, again, there's all these little things that you can start to do that will reduce your exposure. It's still a problem, though, if your body can't handle any toxicity well. So we'll talk about that more. We're going to get into that. But avoid personal products with phthalates and parabens. So that's become a pretty hot topic. Most people are familiar now with the amount of shampoos that you can buy that say paraben-free. But the thing that I caution you on is often the um, more you know commercialized brands, even though they say uh, paraben-free, if you look at the actual chemical list on them, they're still full of a billion other chemicals. They just don't have that one. So good, but um, you can use things like coconut oil for your lotion. Um, Scott and Logan make fun of me all the time because after I get out of the shower, I look like a big grease head for a couple hours, but it's coconut oil that's all over my skin. It takes a little bit longer to, to blend in, but it gets there. So it's something that you might, maybe you can do that at night. Um, so there's options for that. So ideas though, use as many food products as you can for your beauty products. Think about switching your cleaning products over in your home. Think about having possibly an air filter in your home, um, that you something that you clean the air with on a, maybe a weekly basis, something that you use. So some ideas. Any comments that you guys have tried or other things that you think are important? Plants. Plants are a great thing to do. Yeah, air cleaners, natural air cleaners. Good thing to do. And I, I'm at home, I kill most of them. So I have one remaining one. But... <laughs> Yeah, but keep keep re rejuvenating your plants. Like, so, yes. Okay. And then you want to think about what you're consuming. So as much organic meat as you can. If you can't do organic, do free range. But the big one that you're looking for is your meats and your dairy products are typically raised with hormones if they're not organic. So I know it is expensive, but it's something that can really make an impact on your health for the future. It really it decreases the load that your liver is dealing with. So you want a free range hormone, antibiotic free, dairy free, or dairy meats, um, eggs whenever possible. Cold water fish, fresh cold water fish. So that is a big one that I, I think most people are aware of now, but I still have clients that just say that, you know, the farm raised salmon from Costco is so good. Well, it might taste good. I haven't tried it, but the thing is, is that it's rate, there's such high levels of toxicity in that meat. And so it's not worth it is really what it comes down to. It's not worth it to expose the rest of your body to that. Always wash produce well. It, try to find as much organic produce as you can. So the big list that you're going to look for, if you can't buy all of your fruits and vegetables organic, this is the list that you need to find an organic, organic resource. So these are the ones that are highly sprayed with pesticides, and because they have thinner a thinner skin, they absorb those pesticides very easily. So these are, the, these are your top 12 that you will really want to think about in terms of finding an organic resource. Okay. So lowest in pesticides, you're going to notice these. most of these have a thicker skin, but they're much more um, well protected. So if you're going to choose between which ones you're going to buy organic and which ones you're not, this is your list that's a little bit easier to buy or a little bit safer to buy in a conventional source. So I find it amazing, like, uh, so do you guys, where do, you, where do most people shop? King Supers is probably pretty most common. Um, uh, King Supers has so many organic choices now, it's amazing. Um, but if you, now we have a vitamin cottage right in Golden, so there's so many resources for you to find organic produce. Um, I think, you know, I know vitamin cottage tries, I, one of their philosophies, they had a meeting for practitioners in the area a couple months ago and one of the things that they really talked about is that whole foods is really into local produce and it doesn't matter so much to them if it's organic as long as it's local well that's really important but exposing yourself to pesticides is probably even more important so i would say vitamin cottage will make the decision to bring in the organic ingredients even if they have to ship it from a further distance. So I'd say if you had to make the decision, it's definitely your call, but I would go with the organic over the local. So just because of how it impacts the rest of your body, the absorbability, the impact on the gut, we're going to talk about this more. Okay. So metabolic detoxification, we're going to talk a little bit more about this, what it actually does. And I want to go through the difference in and why we do this class. So 
I've always waited till the spring to do this class. I usually do it in like April, uh, March or April. But I really, after listening to our practice members for years, I've decided that after Christmas is incredibly important to do a detox. Mm -hmm. Because most people will tell me that they fell off their normal eating patterns in some way. They, and now they're dealing with increased cravings. It's been, they feel pretty miserable. They're more tired. Um, there's a high level of irritability this time of year. It's a tough time to, for people to really start to change their habits and get back in, into what their goals are. And so we want to go through some ideas so you really understand this process. And one of the most important things to understand about detoxification is that it's very energy dependent. So what I mean by that and what I'll talk about in a minute is that it's dependent on food. So what are the most common detoxes that you read about in magazines and on the media? What do you guys see? Starve, yeah. Fasting, juice, like juice cleanses. Um, really, you know, don't eat for a week. You know, that's what I see most of the time. There are those types of programs. Um, and so what is, can you, are you getting the difference then if, so, if a uh, detoxification process is energy dependent and you're just drinking juice for five days, what's going to happen? So that's what I'm going to explain here. So you guys really start to see that difference. Um, so there's a nice little picture of the liver. And we're going to go into the two. There's, so there's four things that are really um, important in your body in order for it to detox well. And so we divide it into different phases. So it starts to make a little bit, a little bit more sense. But phase one happens within the liver. And so food is typically fat-soluble. A fat-soluble par particle has to be taken into a different form called a free radical. And so, do you guys, are you familiar with the term free radicals in terms of cancer? So free radicals are cancer causing, and our body's producing free radicals all the time. And when your body has to take the food that you've eaten and convert it into something else, it has to go through this process that makes it a free radical. To get it through that step to become a free radical, it's dependent on protein. So again, if you're not eating any protein and you're just drinking juice, any idea what happens there? Your liver kind of shuts down. Nothing really works. It just becomes stuck. And it can't really process the food or any of the particles that you're consuming. And so the liver becomes actually overburdened at that state. So it's really important. It's called functionalization. It doesn't really matter what it's called. But it just means that you have to have protein to get it to this stage. And then after it becomes this free radical, then we need to attach water to it to actually make it into a different substance that the kidneys can excrete. So that needs antioxidants. So if you're, again, if you're not eating anything, you're just drinking water, serious issue here. Um, if you're just drinking juice, you're having bigger issues. You're actually, you're probably getting some antioxidants. So you've got phase two moving, but you don't have phase one happening at all. And so if this gets, this process gets stuck at all along the way, you have an increase of free radicals in the system. And when your body can't deal with free radicals, that causes damage to the cells, which then creates cancer. So we need this whole process to work well all the time. Every single day, your body's got to deal with this stuff. So the other things that are important, so we learned two things there, that your whole cleansing process is one, really dependent on protein, Two, really dependent on antioxidants. Both are really important. So where do you get antioxidants? Berries and just, you know, fruits and vegetables in general are great sources of antioxidants. They're phytonutrients. So, and protein, we know we can get, so if you're a vegetarian, you need to be really conscious of your protein intake. If you're not a vegetarian, you've got a lot more resources, but they've got to be good, clean resources. So we talked about, you know, clean sources of meat and clean sources of, like, nuts would be really good, but you've got to be getting plenty of protein into the system. So uh, both are very important. Phase three, then, it's got to get out through the kidneys and the bowels. That's really important. So the kidneys have to be working well. And then the next piece of it that we want to just touch on is the connection between acidity and fat storage. So any idea if you just think of Americans on like a pH scale, where would most Americans fall? Where would their bodies fall? Would they be more basic or would they be more acidic? 
They're extremely, extremely acidic. And so when you're acidic, what happens is when your body has toxicity, um, so anything that your body can't handle, so maybe you had a bag of Doritos on a really bad day, you eat some Doritos. Well, are, is there really anything good in Doritos? Probably not much. So that the toxicity that your body can't handle gets stored in fat. Anything that it can't process gets stored in the fat. And if you're really acidic, your body can't let go of fat. So if we're going to cleanse well, and we're going to get this whole system to work appropriately, we need to bring your pH more into the basic level, neutral to basic. And so if there's, a system, if there's no system in your cleansing process to address acidity, we've got a problem because your body can't re actually release the toxicity that's in your fat. So all of these things are really important. Is it, is it kind of making sense? So there's several different factors that we care about throughout this process. So here's just a, a better, I think a little bit better graph of it. So you go from phase one to phase two. And so in phase one, we just were, that's where we really care about the protein. In phase two, we care about the antioxidants. And then we need to make sure that your body is on that more side of, of like a basic pH or more alkaline pH. We don't want to leave it in that reactive intermediate stage because if all our food particles are left in that, that's what's causing damage to our cells. Does that make sense? I used to go into like cytochrome P450. I mean, people are just like, really? Like, so we're not doing that. We're just going to move on. Okay. So that's why I'm so against fasting programs because they can do so much damage to your body. So it might be a really quick way to like lose some water weight, but in terms of creating a shift in the body and really creating health, they are not addressing those issues. So... Yeah, so if you were constantly doing that, and even, you know, when you think about it through the day, think about um, there are so many of us that spend our days, like if we have really crazy busy days and we don't eat consistently, your body can go through the exact same response. So eating consistently, that's another reason why it's so important. One is to keep your blood sugar really steady, but the other is to keep that whole system working well. So when I talked about like... Um, uh, one of a system of, or a symptom of toxicity that can happen is whenever you eat food, if your liver can't process that food well, people will get really nauseous or feel really awful after they eat consistently throughout the day. So that's one of those signs that we just we want to make sure that we're addressing that so people can digest their food efficiently. They can get the nutrients they need out of their food. They're not going into this fat storage state. They get everything really cleaned out and working in their system. Okay, so the other one that I think is really key is heavy metals. So most of us had amalgams in our mouth. Wouldn't you say I did? Maybe still do. Still do have some amalgams left. Um, and so one of the things that can happen is, and that's just one. I mean, that can leak so many different things into our body. But if we've had lots of vaccines in our life or um, different medications or just in the environment, we can be exposed to a lot of heavy metals. And so one of the most common symptoms that Americans have, or we'll talk about now, two of them, is fatigue and brain fog. They're tired all the time. And they um, feel like they can't make good decisions or they just can't, they just can't think. They're dependent on caffeine to really get their system going to be able to even think in the morning. That's a problem. But one of the things that we really want to address with toxicity is clearing out heavy metals out of your system. And so one of the things that I'm going to talk about with the Clear Change program and what we use for this is a combination of products, but it can actually increase the excretion of heavy metals by up to 87%. And one of the ways that has always been used in like the natural health community is something called chelation. And chelation can be pretty dangerous though because it can take out really good metals out of your system too. So we need a combination of metals in our system. There's actually key nutrients that our body uses that are actually a metallic base. And if you do chelation, you can also strip the body of really helpful metals. So, but we don't want things like mercury in our bodies. So it's how do we find that balance? And so when we look at this, um, we, we actually want to upregulate your natural ability to excrete heavy metals. And so when I have people do this program, they'll often taste, have a metallic taste in their mouth as their body is clearing out heavy metal. So just so you know, just a heads up. If you taste, feel like you're tasting metal for a couple days, 
it's actually a good thing. So, um, so we'll talk about this. This program really works to support the systems that naturally detoxify the body based on a lot of science. So it's, Metagenics is the company that we started using initially in our, in our um, office because they do have such good research and they have really clean products. And that was really important to us, is that I want something, anything that we use, I want it to have been tested thoroughly. I want to make sure that it's been um, third-party tested by multiple resources to make sure that it's clean. And so when we look at this, um, I can describe more of it. But when you do, uh, I'll describe the products that are used, but what people will talk about when they do a detoxification program is that they have more energy and they've... Uh, um, who of us, I know there's not many of us who don't want more energy, but when you think about that, um, fatigue is always the, that number one symptom that people always go back to. So more energy is a big one, but less foggy headedness. So that's really key. Fewer coffee. So coffee cravings, sugar cravings, really important when you're working on your diet, less water retain to retention and change in body composition and release of actual fat. So one of the things that I we do, and I'll explain this a little bit more, but we always do something called a bioelectrical impedance analysis when someone starts a detoxification program. And so what we're looking at is what is their fat percentage in their body, what is their muscle mass percentage in their body. And so in order to change that, most programs that people do, if you change your diet at all or you're really restricting your diet at all, any idea what will happen to people's, what kind of weight do they typically lose? Like if you just decide, oh, I'm just going to do Weight Watchers, what kind of weight would you typically lose? Muscle. You would lose muscle. Most people lose a lot of muscle when they do that. And so what happens is you lose more and more muscle. What happens to your metabolism? It just keeps going down. And so then they'll wonder why they gain weight back so easily or why it was hard to maintain that weight loss is because they've lost all of this muscle that was actually burning a lot more calories for them. So we want to make sure that when someone is working on improving their health, they're increasing their muscle mass and they're losing fat. And so one of the things that will happen with this program is we want to measure body composition where it's at initially and then change those ratios. So we want to see actual, just even by someone doing a detox, that they're increasing their muscle mass and decreasing their fat percentage, their body fat percentage. So something that we're looking at in the process and measuring. So the things that you want to think about, these are just, if, you, if you're not conscious of detoxification, like I would say probably the majority of America isn't, these are really common issues that people are developing. So the more symptoms that people have, the bigger the issue is. So I'm going to start to explain this process so you guys get it. When you look at the questionnaire, um, one of the things that I want you to figure out is are you of a score between, you know, maybe 2 and 50, or are you 50 and above? People who are 50 and above, most of the detoxification programs I recommend are a 10-day detox, mainly because people can get that done. Most people can do 10 days. I, when, when we go into like, okay, you need to do this for three months, I get a little like, oh my gosh, I don't think that person is really going to follow through with this for three months. So 10 days usually is pretty manageable. The problem is if someone is very toxic and you think about a 10-day time period, it's way too intense for the individual. They need to look at more of like a 28-day detox. So if you score like over 50, we've got to scale back on the intensity of what we're doing. So starting with the detox questionnaire can give you a ton of information about what your body's actually going through. If you're over 100, please talk to me. Like this is something that we're, we're going to start maybe like you can have a teaspoon of this product a day. So we just, we need to, we need to tailor each program based on what someone's actually going through. So 10 day program is for more mild issues. A 28 day program is for more severe issues. So we'll talk about that a little bit. But one of the things that I think about when you start something like this, I'm going to go through the products in just a minute, but you need to think about weaning yourself off of caffeine. So if you are having like eight cups of coffee a day, that's a problem. Or, you know, like Red Bull or anything like that. If you have a serious caffeine addiction, that is really hard on the liver. So both the liver and the adrenal glands. But we need to think about cutting down on that. Otherwise, by day three of the detox process, 
people are getting a pretty massive headache from the caffeine withdrawal. So it's just something to think about. I will, and I'm going to go through this in just a second, um, what the protocol looks like. But I would say plan on, you know, one cup is okay. More than that, we're not okay. We're actually going to, your body's going to be working hard to detoxify what was in that caffeinated beverage versus trying to actually get to the more um, serious issues in the body. So we want to think about caffeine. Now, I will go through this so you guys can see it. Sorry, Josh, one more thing. Can you pass out the actual protocol, the stapled sheets? Thank you, thank you. And then, sorry, and then also the one that's the clear change. Oh, you mean very that one. Okay. So one of the things that this um, involves is a powder. So you use this type of a shake-like drink. And so it sounds stupid, but don't over-scoop. So what that means is there's a scooper in here. And you want nice level scoops each day. You don't want them heaping over. And the reason I say that is because to do a 10 day detox, you have just enough product to finish that in this one container. So perfect for that time period. Um, really exciting now, Metagenics has it in a peach flavor as well. So this is more of like a, I would say kind of like a vanilla type of a flavor. But if you would rather have a peach flavor, we've got a lot of that one as well. But you want to use just the right amount. You want to use just what's in a scoop. And I'm going to go through this whole process in a minute. Another one is that I will not let someone do a detox if you are constipated. That is one of the worst things that you could do. So imagine you're upregulating liver function and kidney function, but you're constipated. Any idea what would happen there? That, yeah, I mean, you would be just absolutely ill, very ill. So you've got to be regular. And so often what I'll have people start to do, so you'll see this, is we use a product called Colonix that's added into our protocol. Because what can happen when someone starts this product, there's fiber in it. And so if you're not used to consuming a lot of fiber in your diet and you start adding this in, even though we think, wow, that would actually make us go to the bathroom more, if your body's not ad adapted to that, it can you can actually get constipated. So, hence the colonix. So, what's so good about colonix is that it just keeps everything moving really nicely through the system. So, I have some clients who do detox three or four times a year, and they use colonix every day because they love it. So, it's their best friend. But everybody's different. But this, when you're doing a detox, my goal is to make sure that you are regular no matter what. So I got to keep everything moving through your system. So this is one thing. So if someone isn't regular and they want to do a detoxification program, then we have them start this first and then wait a little, you know, maybe wait about a week, get things moving again, and then they can start the detox program. The other thing that we have them do is making sure that they're on a probiotic. So everything, gut health is really supported through the process again, to make sure that this is a healthy thing for you throughout the entire way. Okay, and then you have to be drinking water. Now your minimum is eight glasses of, eight, eight, eight ounce glasses a day. That's your minimum. What I would prefer to have you do is take your body weight, divide it in half, and that's how many ounces of water you need to be drinking a day. That's much more preferable. So realize if you don't normally do that, and you don't normally drink that much water, that those first three days, you're going to feel like you just are floating around and that you're using the bathroom like every half an hour, but your body will adapt. So within that next, you know, about, it takes usually about three days and someone feels really good and they actually start to crave the water. Okay. And we want you to eat because remember, I just, I'm drilling this into people all the time. Detoxification is energy dependent. So you have to be consuming food. You have to be consuming good quality food in order for this to be successful. So whenever we go into a, detox, a detoxification process, my words of wisdom are to always plan. So this isn't something I'd say, well, start it tomorrow morning. No, first thing about your caffeine consumption. If you're consuming a lot of caffeine, we need to start to wean that down. You don't have to be completely off of it, but you need to get down to a place where, you know, maybe give yourself a week, but if you need to get to a place where one cup of coffee is okay in the morning, okay, that's a much better place to be than if you're having three or four cups of coffee in the morning. So something to think about with your caffeine consumption. Um, but other things that you want to think about, you want to make sure that you have a grocery 
um, list that supports what you're going to be doing. So, um, you know, if you need to um, start to plan how much food you need, um, how many vegetables you're going to need for snacks throughout the day, whatever it is, you want to make sure that you have plenty of food to do this with. And then what we want to do is if when you do a 10 day process like this, I want you to finish it with the detox questionnaire and I want you to finish it with a BIA. So um, last spring when we did this, I had clients who lost up to three inches on their waist because they were carrying so much less um, water, you know, fluid in their system. They had a lot less inflammation. Um, they decreased their fat percentage tremendously. And most of that toxic weight is stored in our middle. So when you really start to support the system, you can clear out quite a bit. So it's pretty fun to see these differences for people and how they were before, how they are after. But the other thing that this process will do is really change your cravings. So when the liver is really toxic, people crave sugar 24 seven. When, it's, when it starts to work better, their sugar cravings are much reduced. So let me start going through this, um, this whole process so that you guys can see what it looks like. Okay. Okay, so we always started out with, I want you to have a goal. So if you're going to commit to something for 10 or 28 days, it's really, really important that you have a goal. And please don't have it to be like, gee, I have a wedding coming up that I want to look better for. I mean, let's, let's think of like a real health goal. Do you want more energy? Do you want to feel better throughout the day? Do you want to wake up and feel more alert? Um, do you want to lose belly fat? Do you want to be able to exercise with more ease or just whatever it is? I want you to start to think about what that is. And we want the goal to be specific. We want it to be measurable. So it's not just I want to lose weight. It would be I would like to lose five pounds. So we want it to be measurable. We want it to be achievable. Most people are not going to lose 30 pounds during a 10-day cleanse. So let's think of an achievable goal. So maybe your goal is that you want to reduce your cravings and have more energy so that you can embark on a good dietary program. So think about what's actually achievable. And then it needs to be relevant. Okay, so when we want a timeline. So is your goal to do a detox within the next month? What is your goal to actually get this program done? Then we go through your initial evaluation. So we take measurements on your weight, your waist measurement, your hip measurement, waist to hip ratio. Anyone know why we care about that? Waist to hip ratio. We want to know where you're storing your weight. So what's really interesting is um, when people, so there's two, I mean, we can, we can store definitely weight in our midsection, but also storing weight in your hips is a sign of toxicity. So but waist, we want the reason we care so much about the waist to hip measurement is that when we store a lot of belly fat, that produces hormones on its own. It's like its own organ entity in your body that's producing hormones. So it's so usually stress hormones, um, toxic levels of estrogen or testosterone in the system, not a healthy thing. So we want to really work on that. And then MSQ score. The MSQ is your medical symptom questionnaire. So we're going to ask you. What's your quality of life like? And we're going to look at your detox questionnaire as well. So we get a baseline. We do all those tests at the end of your 10-day detox, and we want to see a change. We should see a change. Okay, so when you look at this in the program guide, you've got a list of foods to eliminate and a list of foods to include. So is, there any, is anyone freaked out? Or are you guys okay? So... When you look at the list of foods to eliminate, so egg yolks, red meat, pork, your more processed meats, hot dogs, alcohol would not be good during a detox process. Soda and artificially sweetened beverages, flour and wheat products, so we basically put you on a gluten-free diet for a period of 10 days. Dairy products we take out. Caffeine, one, one per day is okay. Peanut and peanut butter products, soy products, and then we want you to avoid citrus. Is that how, how you guys doing so far? <laughs> the peanut butter is found to have a lot of mold and um, toxic contaminants within it. So I'd rather you can do like almond butter, you could do cashew butter, you could do other nut for forms of nut butter, just not peanut butter for that time period. But mold is the big one that they found in peanut butter. It's a really big bummer. You can do other forms of nut butter. Okay. 
So here's the, let's concentrate on what we do get to eat instead, okay? So organic sources of protein and veggies at each meal. So remember, I'm always worried about your protein levels and your antioxidant levels. But you can have egg whites, and you can have fresh fish, chicken, and turkey. You can have fresh or frozen fruits and vegetables. One of the things that I want you to really think about is how many dark leafy greens can you get per day? And thinking about adding those in a couple times a day would be awesome because those really support the liver. The other type of vegetables that I love for people to get are your cruciferous veggies because they really support the liver in getting rid of toxic estrogen or testosterone, balancing hormones. So if you can do like steamed broccoli, steamed cauliflower, if you like Brussels sprouts, good, good resources there, okay? Rice and products made from rice are okay. So you're looking at your gluten-free grains, gluten-free products. Rice or almond milk is okay. You can do Greek yogurt, but I would love it if people would do this without dairy, but that's up to you. If you feel like you really need some cottage cheese or Greek yogurt or something like that, okay. But if you can get rid of it for 10 days, awesome. Because dairy, it's well, it's acceptable if it's a clean source, dairy is not the greatest for the liver in terms of producing like a lot of congestion in the liver. So here, almonds, walnuts, cashews, pecans, or nut butter. So in seeds, you could have sunflower or pumpkin seeds. Lots and lots of water. You're okay to have some, um, if you think about like Pellegrino or um, like some of your carbonated water, like that would be okay. And then herbal teas are okay, and you can use stevia, and you can use a little bit of honey. So you actually have a ton of resources here. The other food combination that I really love for people to do whenever they're doing any kind of like a liver cleanse or cleanse in general to support gallbladder liver would be apples, beets, and carrots. So the reason those are my favorite, if people have an apple once a day, the reason that's so key is that um, apples have malic acid in them and malic acid really thins the bile to help your body get toxicity out of the liver. So there's one thing that you can think about is just having a half an apple or an, a small apple every day. The second one is beets. And the reason I like beets so much is one, they're a great source of fiber. They will turn everything red though, just so you know. So just a heads up. Um, but the betaine actually supports both phase one and phase two of the detoxification process. So beets are awesome. And then the third one, so in, if you... I would suggest just do roasted beets or do cooked beets in some way. Um, and now they have steamed beets that you can buy in like little packages at the grocery store. So you don't even have to do it yourself anymore. Good ducks. You could do it. Here's, those are really good. You could do them. You could do pickled beets. Um, it would still be a good resource. It's, if, you've got, if you've got a lot of gut issues, though, stay away from too much pickling. So, but you could do them. And then carrots. So like having, plan on having like a handful of baby carrots every day. And that's really full of, of vitamin A. It really supports the liver, great source of fiber. So those are my top three. Like if you could just eat those every day, like do your cleanse, have them every day during your cleanse, and then just keep eating those, you've got good cleansing support that just keeps going. So just have to get used to the red in the toilet, which scares some people sometimes. So, okay. So this is what your program looks like. So you start out with the first day you don't eat a lot of food. So the first day you're just mainly drinking your like vegetable broth, chicken broth. You're giving yourself a really quiet day in terms of digestion so that you can enhance everything else. Does that make sense? So this is just one day done. So you're still getting nutrients. I would suggest alternating between vegetable or chicken broth. but. Um, that's an idea. So, but you start out your day with either pomegranate juice, you can drink eight ounces of that, and you'd have a scoop of the colonics. So immediately you're giving your body some support to start cleansing, getting rid of, getting, cleaning out the digestive tract. Then you can do one scoop of this ultra clear product and eight ounces of water with ice if you want. Ice does help. I will say that. This is not horrible. If anyone, I, I've had to do this product so many times in my life that I'm kind of used to it by now, but you can add ice to it and it does kind of, um, gosh, if it's at room temperature, there's a little bit of a chalky kind of a taste to it. But if you add the ice to it, it really does calm that down quite a bit. And we have recipes for you to alter your ultra clear if you would like. So we've got ideas for flavoring with that. Okay. So then you're going to take your probiotic 
and you're going to take Advoclear, which is additional detox support. It's full of antioxidants. So you, you have this little routine that you get down in the morning, and then that day is the only day that you're really just calming everything for the digestive tract. So you could use chicken or vegetable broth and sip that all day long, or you could use Ultra Meal, which is another product that's just basically like a pre-digested um, shake product. And so what I mean by that is everything is ground down. It's not hard for your body to get nutrients from it. You drink it, the nutrients get into your system immediately. So you've got a great source that's giving you antioxidants and protein without stressing the digestive system at all. So you do that throughout the day. And then you would have your last scoop, just one scoop that day of the Ultra Clear again. And you take another probiotic and you take another Advoclear. And then the fun begins with really the true detoxification process. So day two through 10 is when you would actually, you would start eating again, you start eating all of your normal foods, but at that point you'd be taking two scoops of the ultra clear product two times a day. The reason why um, we use this product is because it supports all of those levels of detoxification. So it supports phase one, it supports phase two, it supports alkalinity. So there's actually um, proteins and enzymes in this product that support you to become more alkaline. And then um, what's the third thing I'm missing? It has metallothionine in it. So it really helps upregulate your body's own natural process to get rid of heavy metals. So it's probably the, this um, was like a, gosh, I think fifth or sixth generation product, meaning first they just started with phase two support and then they added um, some support to put in to make someone more um, alkaline. And then eventually this several rounds later came out with everything needed to actually do a good detox. But other things that you want to start to think about is you want to work on your stress relief. So stress hormones cause us to hold toxicity within our system. So when we get really stressed, we produce excess cortisol, which is more of your long-term stress hormone. And cortisol causes us to store more fat. So when we store more fat, that fat has toxicity, and so we go through this vicious cycle. So something that you want to think about is, what can you do to help out your stress relief on a weekly basis and a daily basis? Deep breathing, and just even using your respiratory system is a great way of detoxifying. Exercise is an awesome way to detoxify. Skin brushing is another way. So if you, anyone's ever, does anyone have a skin brush here? <laughs> Sonia's got one. Okay, so the skin brush, and you think about your skin is constantly letting out toxins. What you do with a skin brush is a really hard bristled brush. And you would start, um, and you can buy them like a vitamin cottage, I'm sure Whole Foods has them. Um, but you would start at your extremities, so you'd start at like your ankles, and you would go in circular motions and keep brushing upwards. And that, what that's doing is supporting the lymphatic drainage. So when you think about it, your lymph system is what holds a lot of the toxins carrying them through the system constantly, that's a way to actually support the lymph system and bring toxicity out of the system so it can be processed more easily by the liver. So that's something that um, is a great thing. So if you take a shower every night, skin brush before you get in the shower. It actually feels really good too. Um, and then ask questions. So if this feels like a right timing and a good... Um, you should be very well supported to do a, a program like this, but ask questions and communicate with us. So what we do is we do that initial check-in when we start the process. We do a check-in after the process is done, but if you're midway and you're saying, okay, I've, um, you know, this week I, I'm going to the bathroom four times a day, you might want to communicate that. So there's things that I want to know. We get to know each other pretty well during a detox process. But I want to know what's happening so we make sure that everything is working as it should and that you're very well supported to do that process. Questions on this at all, on the actual protocol. This is a 10-day protocol. So if you're not, if you're, if you're scoring like a 99 on this test or a 75, then we would start out more slowly and we go through a 28-day detox. Um, so what the kit then comes with is it comes with another guide, and we've altered the program a little bit to make give it um, some more digestive support. But this does give you a ton of information. Um, and then it comes with your shaker cup, so you can drink your 
ultra clear wherever you are. So this is really exciting for people. Um, but it does have your shaker cup in there with your blender ball so that you can you, you could be at work and do a quick, you know, you could do your shake there. So, and then it has your ultra clear renew in it. And then it also, your kit also has the AdvoClear. So that's what's in these kits. You choose if you want peach or original flavor. And then we also then include your Colonex, so you've got good gut support. And then we include your probiotics, so you've got that support. So you've got everything that you need to complete that, as well as your bioimpedance analysis before and after. So any questions on that, though, at all? Does this make sense to you guys? Okay. Thank you, Bill. Just needed someone to <laughs> give me an answer here. Okay. I have no idea where I went with my slides. Okay, so here's it gives you guys the cost. So um, the cost of all of the products and the two BIAs is $315. We're, tonight we're offering it for $275. So if you guys want to do it, um, talk to us tonight about it because we've got a great deal to do it. Um, and then ask us questions because everybody's different. Everybody has their own concerns, their own needs. Um, if you need to do more of a 28-day detox, this will work for you. You won't need more of this. You just need another one of these. So that will then include everything that you would need to do a 28-day detox.